For the time's sake, we're not going to read the whole chapter, but it's worth reading when you go home just to get more revelation. All right, in verse 12, Mark chapter 11, verse 12, it says, And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he, Jesus, in other words, was hungry. And he, and seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if haply, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Now, this fig tree was afar off. And it had leaves. If a fig tree have leaves, it should have fig with it. And this fig tree did not have any fig in it. And it actually spoke to Jesus and says, No, you're not going to have nothing from me. Because we see here, Jesus answer it. So, in order for you to give an answer, somebody has to say something first. So that fig tree spoke to Jesus. And he's the one that created that. He made them the fig tree, created the fig tree. And the fig tree says, no, you're not going to get anything today from me. Sometime our body will speak to us. It will tell us, no, no. I'm not going to cooperate with you. If it's your hand or feet or whatever is hurting, and it'll tell you, no, you no, no, no. You're going, to, you're going to hurt today. But we have to speak to it. We have to answer. So here we see that he spoke loud enough to that fig tree where the disciple could hear it. In verse 20, it says, And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Now, tree, usually if you cut it down, it will usually dry from the outside first. But in this particular case, it dried from the roots. God's word will always go to the root of your problem. And we see here, verse 21, And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. Verse 22, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. That's what we're talking about. That's what we teach us. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Put up a little bit. What's going on? Put up a little bit. Is it better? Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can tell. Okay, praise the Lord. 
verse 24, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Verse 25, And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. So we are going to be talking about five things, five important things about faith or the God kind of faith. I want you to pay particular attention to all of these five points because it's going to help us. But before I do uh, go into that, I want us to turn to Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. I want to show you something here that uh, it is very, very, very important for you to see what's going on about faith. Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. I'm going to read it from two translations. In verse 23, it says, But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Now, you may say, well, why are we teaching so much on faith? Faith is one of the most important force there is. Because without it, you're not going to get to God. You came to God by faith. And we'll see this. Now, the New Living Translation, listen to what it says here. The New Living Translation says this. Before this faith came, we were held prisoners. We were held prisoners by the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. So, you and I, before faith came, we were held prisoners. You didn't become born again. You were prisoners of Satan. But when faith came, thank God, we got free. Now, why do we, why should we, uh, live by faith, or why should we uh, 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 learn and, and, and read and, 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 and be preached by about faith? Well, first of all, in Hebrew chapter 10, 38, it tells us, now the just shall live by faith. The just. You are the just. You will live by faith. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. This is what God's word says about faith. In Romans 1 17, it says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Galatians 3.11, you don't have to turn, oh, turn, uh, turn there, but take these scriptures down, you can look when you get home. Galatians 3.11 says, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And finally, Hebrews 11.6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. 
For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So faith is very, very important. Without it, you're not going to please God. Without it, we're not going to receive anything from God. It took faith to get us born again. All right? So the first thing that I want you to uh, write down is one of the first points is faith will not work in an unforgiven heart. Faith will not work in an unforgiven heart. You've got to see that. In other words, if you're holding grudge against someone, if you are for holding unforgiveness, it will not work. Your faith will not work. We see in Mark 11 where Jesus says, if you forgive, first he says when you stand praying, forgive. Mm -hmm. All those that may have something done something to you. And then it says, verse 26, if you forgive not, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you. So, if anyone has hurt you, if anyone has hurt you in the past, don't hold that against them. I don't care what they did to you. You don't have the power. Though you get angry, you, you judge them, you don't have the power to help them. So you release them from your heart. Release them. Do not hold grudge. Do not hold unforgiveness. I don't care what they did to you. And I'll go further to say, about that. Don't Talk ugly about them. Don't curse them. When you say bad things about them, you're cursing them. Bless them. Bless them. No matter what they did to you, bless them. Open your mouth. Don't go by your feelings. Go by your heart. You are a spirit being. Open your mouth and say, Father, I bless that person. Bless them, Father. And you know what? When you do that, you release them, you're going to be blessed. God knows how to take care of those people. God knows how to take care of the situation. Well, our job is to love people. So faith will not work in an unforgiven heart. Why? Because Galatians 5, 6, in Galatians 5, 6 says, faith worketh by love. Mm. Faith worketh by love. Love always, 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 
overcome any situation. Love always wins. When you are walking in love, love always wins. Why? Because faith, your faith will work like it's supposed to work. Faith works by love. Love must be the dominating, motivating force behind all operations of faith. Don't try to exercise faith without walking in love, because it will not work. And one of our greatest hindrances to the God kind of faith is me, the big me. I got to be first. I'm more important than that other one. I'm right, you're in the wrong. Always putting me, me, me first. No. Love never put me, me first. Love never put you first. Love always put the other person first. Just think how much God loves you. Never, you, you, only the angels knew how many sins you actually committed before you came to the Lord. First of all, the minute you were born, you were born in sin. But yet God put you first. Your father put you first. He loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. And he says, you be imitated of me. You imitate me. Jesus says, Father, let them know that you love them as you love me. And then he prayed. He says, Father, the love that you love me with, I have loved them. So you and I are loved by God. Satan has hate. He has no love. He's filled with bitterness, with resentment, with hatefulness. That's why God don't want us to go there. God wants us to imitate him. So the God kind of love will work when we are walking, operating, in love. Let's first look at 1 Corinthians 13. This is an example of somebody that is walking out of love. Allowing the senses to, to dominate them. Verse 1, chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. I don't care if you know all, if you could speak all the language in this earth, all the language of the world. You understand it fully. Every language there is. But if you are not walking in love, you are just a sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. That's all you are. Verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have the all faith so that I could remove mountains 
and have not love, I am nothing. I don't care if you could understand everything just the way God made, everything God ever made, and you have faith that you could move the mountain. If you don't have love, it's for nothing. Finally, verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not love, it profit me nothing. Nothing. Even if you give your body to be burned, give everything you have and give your body to be burned. But if you don't have love, you <coughs> did it for nothing. So love is very, very, very important. Because it's not going to work without it. Your faith will not work without it. It will not work without it. Love is the power charge behind the God kind of faith. Love is the power charge to the God kind of faith. Now here in 1 Corinthians 13 we could see how we walk in it allowed our sense to rule over us. Love is very, very important. And you got it. Mm -hmm. That's right. The love of God has been shed abroad in your heart. First of all, he gave us faith. You got the measure of faith. Romans chapter 12 tells us that. Every one of us have been given the measure of faith. We got it. It's inside of us. You don't have to look for it. You don't have to pray for it. It's there. When you became born again, he gave you that. Three things you don't have to pray for. Number one is right with God. When you became born again, he made you his righteousness. You have it. You don't have to pray for it. And then, when you became born again, he gave you a measure of faith. You don't have to pray for it. You don't have to ask for it. It's there. And then, he gave you love. Those three things have been given to us. You don't have to pray for it. So, you got it. And he loves you. He says, I love you with an everlasting love. Thank God he does mm. love us. Thank God he doesn't judge us every time we make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Amen. Huh? Praise God. So that was point number one. Faith will not work with unforgiveness in your heart. So, we do away with unforgiveness. And then number two, point number two. Faith is of the heart and not of the head. Let's look at Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Faith is of the heart, not of the head. Verse 8. It says, but what said it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, 
and shalt believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart men believe it unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You see that? Faith is of the heart, not of the head. How many of you folks, by the way, have been confessing this, this, this word like, like uh, Dana and uh, Alani has been saying? Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I've been confessing that. Man, I get in that car. Mm. I get in that car. All I'm doing is confessing all the way. All the way. I'm confessing St. Corinthians. Chapter 9 and, and chapter 8. Hmm. And that also, uh, 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 3 John 2. Uh, yeah, 3 John 2. And uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And it really, really, really starting to get strong. It's so wonderful to sit back and confess the word. Hear yourself saying it over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you that your word says you're able to make all grace abound toward me, Father. That I have an all sufficiency and all things may abound to every good work and charitable donation. And I thank you, Father, that your word says that I know the grace of my Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for my sake he became poor, that I through his poverty might be made rich. And I thank you, Father, that your word says you supply all my need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And Father, I thank you that your word says, Beloved, I wish above all that you prosper and be in health. Father, I thank you that I am prospering and I'm in good health. Amen. Amen. As you go around confessing these scriptures, after a while, it really is. It really begins to get your mind away from, from the way you used to think. It really is a great, great thing to do. Find scriptures that you, uh, you uh, uh, like or you know you need it, and start confessing it. So we see that faith is of the heart. And not of the mind. You are a spirit. And the word of God is a spirit. It goes into your spirit, not your mind. So, your mind may tell you one thing, but your spirit will put you, connect you, with God. No. This inward man's spirit has nothing to do with the mind of the body concerning believing. Satan will come and tell you, oh, you're not going to get a certain thing. You, you know, he'll put doubt in your mind and everything else. But remember, the word of God is for your spirit. Mm. And it will cause your heart to be charged up. The senses control what the mind believes until the spirit man becomes dominant Amen. in the believer's life. So faith must be released through the mouth with words. Like I said, go around confessing you and confessing the word of God. Use your use your time. Use your words to benefit your life and benefit others. You can control your mind. Sometimes your mind will 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 will, will try to run away from you, you know. Think this, think that, think this, think you know, you can control it. If you speak in the word, 
if you speak in the word, oh, I got to stay away from this. <laughs> if you speak in the word of God, it will help you every single time. Your words are very, very, very powerful when it's in line with God's word. You can learn to make your own positive confession based on the word of God. And it will help you a great deal. Remember, faith works by talking, by saying, or by praying. You can pray. When you pray, by faith it will work. When you speak, by faith it will work. A good example of that is Peter and John as they were walking in the uh, beautiful gate. There was a, a, a sick man there and they didn't pray. Peter says, in the name of Jesus, get up. He didn't, they didn't pray. And Jesus himself healed a, a, a little boy in Niam just by saying, get up. But that's, you could do that way. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you could do it that way by saying, or you could pray. Peter prayed when Tabitha was dead. He went over and he prayed. The Bible says he prayed for her and she came back alive. So faith can work by praying or by saying. All right? These are the God kind of faith that we're talking about. All right? Point number five. Three. This faith, this kind of faith will always work for you. Step three. Did I skip three? Four. Three and four. I didn't give you, I, I don't know. <laughs> I did skip three. <laughs> uh, faith must be released through the mouth with words. Through the mouth with words. Hot faith is based on the word, not on feelings. Your feeling has nothing to do with it. Feelings is from the outside. Faith is from the inside. Satan works in the outside. God works in the inside. Yes, that's right. That's right. So, whatever you feel, this and that or whatever, know that it's not God. Yes, there is a good. There is a good feeling that comes, but it always comes from the inside when you know you got victory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Faith based on feelings will lead to spiritual ruin. So we don't want to go by our feeling. Hmm? Oh, I feel. Even if, I don't know why. Well, I know why, where it comes from. Even in the service, when the power of God is moving, somebody will get, oh, I feel God. You feel God? If you ever feel God, you won't last one second, you're gone. <laughs> you don't feel God. You sense Him in your spirit. 
You don't feel God. When we go by our feelings and our emotions, boy, we get in trouble every single time. We make the wrong decision because we allow our feelings and emotions to control us. God don't want us to go walk by feeling. He says we walk by faith. faith. Mm -hmm. Not by sight or what we can see or what we can feel. We walk by faith. So, your faith, point five, your faith will always work for you. Will always work for you. And sometimes it may even work for others through you. Not all the time, but sometimes it will work for others through you. See, you got your own, a person has his own will. You're not going to overpower them. That's why a lot of time it won't work for them. But now in the case of a newborn Christians, it'll work all the time. Till they grow. Once they grow, God expects them to exercise their own faith. But for newly Christian, newly born again, you can use your faith to help them out. Faith will work every single time for you right. and I right. when we put it to work. Without it, Folks, we're not going to make any contact with God. Why, why, why is the Lord, why is the Lord put it in our heart to teach on faith? The home Bible study is on faith. Hear on faith. Because He's coming back soon. And you're not going to leave this world by feelings and emotions. You're going to leave this world by faith. Amen. You're going to be taken away in a twinkling of an eye by faith. Enoch was taken. He walked with God. He pleased God. Therefore, God took him. He was an example of us. He didn't die. God just took him. Well, if Jesus comes tomorrow, you and I are not going to die. Our body is going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. We're going to be disappeared with him. But it's going to be done by faith. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be holding grudges and unforgiveness and, and all kinds of stuff and expect God to come and take you out. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You got to be walking in love, folks. You got to be walking in love. What can people do to you? A child of God, knowing that you have his nature, knowing that you have his blood in you, knowing that you have his love, the love is already there inside of you. What can somebody do to you? that will hurt you so much that you have to hold on forgiveness and bitterness and resentment to that person. 
No. Here in the natural, it may seem like, oh, that person deserve this, deserve that. Mm -hmm. But if your eyes is set on God, on how much he loves you, and who he is, that he is your beloved father, and that you are his beloved sons and daughters. <laughs> Love is our character. Love. We are identified by love. That's what's inside of us. So, we walk by love, we walk by faith, and most of all, most of all, we please God, our Father. Not our enemies. And you do have enemies. <coughs> but when you're walking in love, by faith, He can't touch you. When you see Jesus, just for him to open his mouth, and he said, well done, well done, my good and faithful servant, well done. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm believing for. Is to hear him say, well done. And we can, all of us, can hear that same word, well done, thy good and faithful servant. So, as you walk with God, make up your heart and mind that you're walking by faith with Him and know that love is what makes faith work. And you will hear Him say, well done. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let's stand up.